again, everybody. This is Dr. Brian Langlois, the Medical Director of the Pet Pantry in Lancaster County, as well as the current President of the Pennsylvania Veterinary Medical Association. And some of you may have seen over the last couple of days that the FDA has all of a sudden put out, not necessarily a warning, but at least an alert and uh, some notifications, for the first time potentially correlating certain types of dog foods with a condition called dilated cardiomyopathy in, uh, in dogs. And I know there's probably going to be a lot of maybe panic uh, associated with that. There could be a little bit of an alarm with pet owners. Are they feeding the right uh, diet? Is the diet going to be harmful to my dog? There's a lot of questions, and a lot of questions we still don't really know the answers to. But I am going to try to break everything down for you guys, so this way at least you have the best information going forward so that you can go to your veterinarian and talk about if your dog does in fact need to potentially have a diet change. Dilated cardiomyopathy is basically a condition where the heart muscle itself starts to weaken. And one of the reasons for that can be a lack of a certain type of amino acid called taurine. And we did notice this as being a problem in cats years ago until they realized that cats could not produce their own taurine uh, without having it supplemented in their diet. So as soon as the taurine was replenished in their diets, we stopped really seeing this kind of condition in cats. But basically, the biggest concern we have with it is it affects usually the left side of the heart, and that is the ventricle, the side of the heart, that is responsible for taking the oxygenated blood that returns from the lungs and basically pumping it through your body so that your body can function and, and take care of all of its normal processes. When this muscle starts to weaken, what happens is the chamber itself there, that left ventricle, starts to dilate a little bit, uh, and it, the blood cannot be pushed through. Um, those chambers of the heart as easily, it does not get to the rest of the body as easy, and there is a little bit of a fluid backup that then happens sometimes, which leads to, you know, commonly called fluid on the lungs or pulmonary edema, and um, it can be a, a life-threatening condition for your dog. Normally, we do see earlier signs of that as far as being, you know, maybe some coughing, being a little more lethargic, tiring more easily, uh, not being as interested in doing things, as well as maybe their appetite being a little off. Those are some of the kind of the things that we look for that might be the, the sign of a, a heart condition. Not necessarily dilated cardiomyopathy, but potentially something going on with the heart. And normally we would see this in certain breeds that were kind of predisposed genetically to it, including Dobermans, Irish Wolfhounds, sometimes Great Danes. Um, but what is the biggest concern with this new FDA um, warning or alert that's gone out is we are a little bit concerned now because we're starting to see uh, an uptick in certain breeds that normally were not genetically predisposed. So that's where you know a lot of this new concern and research is being done uh, by cardiologists. Uh, dilated cardiomyopathy sometimes can be controlled with uh, medication. Sometimes uh, there is a taurine element, and we're going to talk a little bit about taurine in a little bit, but it is something that definitely does need to be addressed and does need to be looked at and treated by your veterinarian. As I previously mentioned, there is a genetic component potentially to dilated cardiomyopathy, but one other thing that we do know is a true causation of dilated cardiomyopathy is a lack of taurine or a low taurine level. And taurine is a basic amino acid, it is uh, very important in heart function. And years ago, back in the 80s uh, and before that, it was noticed that a lot of cats were developing this dilated cardiomyopathy and nobody could really figure out why. And then it was finally discovered that um, basically the diets, uh, commercial diets, the canned diets, the kibbles, things like that, were deficient in the amino acid taurine because cats cannot produce that taurine themselves. Uh, so it had to be supplemented in their diets. And as soon as we realized that uh, that was the issue, we started supplementing properly with taurine. And really, we saw very, very few cases after that of dilated cardiomyopathy that was directly related to taurine. Where this all comes into play in dogs, which is interesting, is the fact that dogs actually can synthesize their own taurine. Uh, through a couple of uh, working with some other amino acids that, you know, that they have, which separates them from cats. And the bigger concern now that's kind of shown up is, well, is there a decreased amount of taurine in some of these foods that the FDA is, is looking at, or does it specifically have to do with the fact that the um, foods that are mentioned or some of these grain-free or exotic type or boutique type pet foods, are they not balanced 100% correctly? Are the ingredients not 100% right? And a lot of attention right now is being looked at as far as the, these grain-free diets. 
Um, and I, I do want to make one thing very clear here is that there's a saying that correlation does not equal causation. So what they found right now is the fact that there is a correlation between some of these dogs that are not genetically predisposed to developing dilated cardiomyopathy being on these grain-free type diets. So this is where the research currently is. There's nothing out there, no study definitively, that says this particular diet or this type of grain-free food is a causation of dilated cardiomyopathy. But it is raising a little bit of alarm in the veterinary community that all of a sudden we're seeing this. So we are looking at it a little bit more closely. So how does exactly this grain-free thing or the, the, the grain-free diets and stuff, how is that even being correlated to or why are we looking at that specifically? Well, nobody's really sure if, if some of these grain-free diets, and basically by grain-free it means we're taking out or there are no of the classic grains that you see in, in pet food. So things like corn, things like wheat, things like rice, um, those types of things are, are all removed, uh, wheat as well and uh, they're being replaced with other things. The two biggest things that we seem to see them being replaced in a lot of these diets are uh, lentils and peas. And there's some sweet potato in there as well, uh, but these are kind of being used to replace the grains that were normally found in the food. Now we don't know, and some of the research is going on right now into specifically the lentils and the peas. Is that somehow affecting the available taurine that uh, the dog can use to make sure that their heart muscles are okay? Again, correlation does not equal causation. There is no study that has shown this specifically, but they are looking at this closely and they are measuring now some of the taurine levels in these dogs to see if they are low. What is interesting and why they're kind of driving a little bit more into researching these diets a little bit further is that they have found in some of these dogs, when they just change the diet to a more um, regular type of diet that you could find that is not grain free or uh, you know one of the, the more larger known brands, the dogs tend to recover and their dilated cardiomyopathy goes away. Uh, this may take three to six months or longer to fully heal, so your dog still may need some medication, but it is something that is very interesting in the fact that now we are not at the causation level yet, but we are looking at something where if we change the diet, the condition goes away. So is there something about lentils and, and peas or some of these other more novel non-grain sources uh, that is causing this, and this is where a lot of the research is. So it is something for all of you as pet owners to be aware of uh, that you may need to be talking to your veterinarian a little bit about potentially at least having your dog checked, uh, not necessarily changing the diet, but uh, certainly a, a conversation to have with your veterinarian. So at the end of the day, basically, what does this all mean? It means that you've just got to be aware of what's going on. If you do notice any of those signs of potential cardiomyopathy in your dog, certainly have them checked by your veterinarian. Uh, your veterinarian certainly can also look up some more data that's being researched by the FDA along with some people that are doing some studies on this, some veterinary cardiologists that can take samples that can become part of this study. Uh, and you just want to be aware of all of these things. Again, we're not saying that these diets 100% cause this problem, but there is a stronger correlation that is showing up now in some of these diets, especially the grain-free and the boutique diets, that may be leading to this condition. And that is where the research is right now. So. Really what we want everybody to be aware of and, and for the, the health of your pets is, you know, if you do have any questions or concerns, certainly contact your veterinarian. If you are concerned about potential signs of uh, cardiomyopathy in your dog uh, and they are being fed one of these, um, you know, diets that have been identified at least a little bit by the FDA or any kind of grain-free, boutique, raw food diets, things like that, uh, you certainly want to discuss that with your veterinarian. There is not necessarily anything wrong, per se, with any of these diets. Uh, it, it, the manufacturers are not intentionally trying to cause heart disease you know, or things like that in your dog, but it is something that needs to be researched, and in time, uh, we may see a change in, in the makeup of these diets, the ingredients, things of that nature. So you definitely want to be aware of that. If you do have any other questions about this uh, important issue, be sure to talk to the only person that has the most up-to-date and accurate information, and that is your trusted local family veterinarian. They are going to have the best information for you. If you are interested in looking for one in PA, certainly uh, contact us at uh, pavma.org, and the Pennsylvania Veterinary Medical Association will be happy to point you in the right direction and provide a little bit more information for you as well. 
This is Dr. Brian Langlois of the Pennsylvania Veterinary Medical Association and the medical director of the Pet Pantry of Lancaster County. We're going to keep following this issue and we will be sure to bring you further updates as they become available.